we need heat to be able to work with the boat during winter. That didn't work either. Shit. Oh, it stopped again. And if it ever goes off, it will make a massive explosion. We are back on the boat again to do some work. It's, as you can see, cold. Great. Uh, no chance of uh, making polyester dry. Uh, so uh, we'll do something else. I've got some mixed reaction to this setup that I presented in the last video. Among the, the reaction is uh, why waste so much space on uh, the head and the shower? And why have this wall to separate the head from the shower? I, I think it's I understand those reaction and I'm not saying this is the end result. But I think it's very important to understand the climate up north in Scandinavia. I've already several times told you it rains a lot. We don't have often the luxury of drying clothes outside as you can have in other climates. In other climates you may not even get wet or, or from sea. Uh, splashing over the boat or actually falling <laughs> into the sea but in this climate we will get wet from all of that plus rain 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 so we need space to dry clothes otherwise you have to go to harbor you cannot stay at sea without the possibility to dry clothes and if you don't have a room separate room that can be a wet room that do not moisture all of the boat then I don't think it's very livable on board in such a small vessel as this. So, in my opinion, the shower room is large, not to have a large shower room, but to have a large room that can actually keep a separate room that can be moistured with all the clothes. And I will, of course, have to have some kind of uh, heater in that room and ventilation to get the moisture out. However, to, to share it, with the head. It is possible, of course, uh, and I might do that. Uh, I, I will definitely consider the input that I have got. I will say I appreciate very much the, the opponents that uh, challenge uh, my ideas. I also got the input that I should plan more thoroughly, and that is, of course, true. But it's not my strong side. I'm a sort of uh, develop as you go guy, and it also means that I will do mistakes and I will have to correct them. Enough chit chat. Today it's uh, very cold, uh, as I said, and I will do some grinding and uh, try to clean up these areas. And also, I need to, to remove it to, to have this part open. As you can see, this total structure is one piece, and for it to be strong, it needs to be completely removed and, and uh, put in as one piece. That's at least what I think. All right, this was that wall and some up here. Took a hell of a time and I am quite exhausted. So I will stop for today. Today I'm digging in the house, not working on the boat, which is of course not good. However, this old house needs a new water supply tube and uh, one of the neighbors is already digging in the ground outside the house to the main cable and uh, I take advantage of that fact and uh, go for a change of the cable. This is the old water supply cable tube and um, on the side of it there is another one that's this one it's a steel cable and uh, it rusted probably many years ago and uh, didn't last very long so they changed it in the 1950s i think with this uh, cable which is uh, i believe uh, bronze cable copper copper i guess it is copper probably copper and uh, i think um, it's very small for a house like this and uh, and also, if we are going to install fire extinguish uh, 
equipment. We need a larger diameter cable. So sorry for working with the hose. It's a few hours later and there is a hole in the ground. I'm almost through. It's been the half two days and the new water pipe for the old hose is finally in place. This has, of course, resulted in no work at the boat, which is sad, but later today we are going to get the plywood stored at the Boatman John's work store, work workshop. Yeah, so let's go there. As we can see, we are now on our way to Boatman John's workshop to get the marine plywood for the fisher. And along with the ride, I have my friend Lafan. He is a very successful programmer and a computer guy generally. What he doesn't know about computers and programming is either not interesting anymore or is yet to come. So let's ask him, how are you doing Lafan? Quite well, thank you. Are you optimistic about this uh, ride to get the plywood plates? Of course. Are you a boat owner yourself? How large is your boat compared to mine? 10 foot more. It's more. It's 42 foot and mine is only 30. He keeps bragging about that all the time. How are you? I'm better than, uh, than uh, your car. We are back in the workshop uh, to get the marine plywood plates and they are here. Yeah, 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 it's, it's solid. Uh... We do this at night because then there are less police to discover us. Could you possibly speed up a bit? <laughs> <laughs> do you enjoy working with the fisher? Yes. <laughs> We got the plywood plates back in the garage. So I've done a uh, few square meters uh, of uh, the inner hull grinding and I'm quite exhausted. I have seen uh, other boat channels do much more. Telling you I did uh, their entire, not their entire, but say two thirds of an inner hull in just one day. Very long day. That's admirable because this is a hell of a lot of work. I managed to crash my car. That was a very unfortunate uh, slow speed accident. Uh, I just hope it doesn't mean too much for the already slow progress due to winter on the boat project. Let's have a small look at the car. Not sure if you have any interest, but uh, this is our summer house, boat house. <laughs> that was stupid said. This is the boat house at our summer house place. It's actually quite new. I built it myself after, of course, applying to the authorities for the correct permissions. I got the permission to build myself because I had some experience from my house at home. It's about uh, 62 square meters and uh, I spent six weeks at the summer completing most of the structure. On the roof there is um, tiles from uh, our house at home, which changed them uh, 15 years ago. Tiles are from 1929. I figured they would make uh, the building a little bit uh, nostalgic. It's a good uh, way to recycle old stones. There was not enough stones to recycle on our home. Many of them were cracked, but uh, the one that I saved are in very good condition and will last many years. Of course, underneath the stones, there are also sheets that are sheets of, uh, not. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, it's sort of tar and it's waterproof. We are at the summer house. Of course, it's not summer. We hardly have any summer in Norway. Anyway, we are here to find a solution to the heating problem in the boat. Maybe in my boat house, I have some solution to that we can discuss. But before that, I figured some of you wanted to know a little bit about the other boat that I have. It's a Ria 900. It's a French built boat. It's a 2009 model. Let's have a look. As in the 900, Ria 900, it's uh, 9 meters plus uh, 50 centimeters for the 
stone platform. It's about 30 foot long. It's um, a shallow draft boat, actually. It's uh, meant for the French coast. While it looks like a lobster boat or a fishing boat, maybe, it, it's a quite a uh, fast boat, actually. It has uh, 220 horsepower Yonmar. Uh, it's a six-cylinder diesel. It will go about 22.5 knots on maximum throttle. However, uh, it's generating a lot of noise. I will uh, give a few videos on while it's running. I like running it on seven knots. Uh, that's uh, very, very nice. It's uh, quiet and the motor actually revs low. This is the motor room. Here we have a 16-inch Raymarine display. It's a combined display, which is both uh, hand-sensitive and uh, we also have uh, knots, which uh, can uh, also adjust it. Gear shafter is very easy to, to maneuver. It's not steel wired, it's actually electrical. So this is the water pilot. That's uh, beginning to be a little bit old, but it's still working great. So I will not change anything that actually works, of course. There is a small kitchen, double bath, and uh, of course, the head. The good thing about uh, this boat is that the deck is actually just um, less than a foot above the sea level. It's maybe as closer to half a foot. Hard to see, but... Uh... It's really not that far. This is not the boat that uh, us sort of smashing uh, the waves. It cuts through the waves. Very urgent. They were made only in about 54. Or was it maybe just 46? I think it was 54. This is one of them. And so there should be 53 less in the world. So good luck getting one. I've already bought a dinghy. Bought it uh, last year for a very good uh, winter price. 2.9 meters and weigh in at 36 kilo, I believe. Something like that. So it's very light. This is actually the mast to the fisher hanging dry, waiting for again to enter sea. But we are here for the heat issue. We need heat to be able to work with the boat during winter. This is the storage room in the boathouse. It's uh, better insulated and uh, the point is of course to have a room with less moisture and, than in uh, the rest of the boathouse for storage of uh, items that uh, do not tolerate a high level of uh, moisture in the air during winter. These are three identical Ebus Pressure Airtronic 4 kilowatt diesel heaters. The good thing about using the diesel heater is it generates four kilowatts of heat and it's a clean air, uh, meaning it will suck air from outside and it will put the fumes outside. So it will circulate the clean air inside the boat. The disadvantage is it cannot be run during night if I'm not there. The fisher is in the boatyard. It's packed with boat during winter and it's not legal to run the diesel heater without actually being there, watching it. That is no problem if you use polyester as it will cure probably within two or three hours if you have the right heat. However, using epoxy, that will need about 20, 24 hours to cure and that will be a struggle for me. Let's have a look at another option. This is an electrical propane driven heater. It's a, it's a very, very good oven as it creates 15 kilowatts of heat when it runs on maximum. However, it does that while polluting the air inside. The air it puts out is polluted with, with the fumes from the combustion. It will actually moisture the air inside and it will also consume the oxygen. It will have to be run outside the boat, putting the fumes and the heat into the boat. The good thing is, of course, that it creates a lot of heat. 15 kilowatts is really a lot and it will heat up the boat in no time. We see 
this is making a lot of noise but wow does it hit it hits and tremendous it's so great this is definitely one of the solutions to bring home it is quick to start using and I could use it to heat up the boat and then use electrical heat to keep the boat hot what do you think about that please any comments Then I guess we need power supply, which is a 12 volt battery, and we need diesel. And where is diesel? Do I have it in the boathouse? I'm not sure. I will see. Unfortunately, there was no diesel in the boathouse. But this boat has 100 liters at least left, and I only need a little bit of it. Let's see if we can get some out without too much hassle. Let's see if we can get some diesel out of the tank by pumping it. Someone has been smart when constructing this boat. It's hard to get the tube into the tank. It's hard to steal diesel, which is a good thing. That didn't work either. Shit. Since I haven't succeeded getting any diesel out of the rear boat, I will actually combine the two tasks. I will refuel the rear boat for the winter because in winter the fuel tank should be filled up at least when the, there is possibility for cold weather because it will suck in cold moist air and breathe out hotter less moist air and it will collect water inside the tanks. This is why you fill up the diesel tanks in order not to have water into them. You know, water will mean uh, that uh, there will grow filth inside the tank and uh, it might clog up the system. So, let's go. This is non-alcoholic. It's now five o'clock and the sun is already about to set. This is Norway during winter. In summer it's quite the opposite, which is super cool. This uh, hybrid 16-inch uh, uh, Raymarine screen. We are going here today and it is this route. It's not very far. I tend to use only one diesel fuel station if I can, because then if anything filth get into the diesel tank, I know what's the source. Then we also will fuel for the diesel heater for the fisher. We are done filling up the diesel tank and also a little bit on the small diesel tank for being able to try the diesel heater. Uh, quite expensive, quite expensive, about uh, $350 or so to fill up the tank. Yeah. One of these five racks 
laying in about uh, 170 to 200 meters of water is said to have huge amount of explosives it's from the second world war and if it ever goes off it will make a massive explosion even at that depth let's cross our fingers it's the next day and let's see if we can get the diesel heater up and running Does it work? Not really. There is no no sign of life in the display. Nope. It did start. Oh, yes. Oh, it stopped again. I will change the unit and see if that works. I switch with a new unused unit. I'm actually not sure if these uh, units uh, are compatible. They are exactly the same num uh, D4, uh, but it's from uh, maybe different productions. But uh, none of them are new in the sense of bought today or yesterday. They are both some years old but this unit I'm now installing it has never been used it has never run let's see if it plugs in and starts up ah it's the same defect code that could indicate it is not the unit it might be the wiring or something else despite my many tests I haven't succeeded in getting the diesel heater up and running luckily we have the other two heating options so we are back on the boat after spending the weekend at the summer house and a uh, great discovery and uh, the work where I was grinding. Uh, all the documentation video has somehow been deleted on my PC, my Mac. The videotapes are gone and I deleted the man card to have space for more material. So that means that this war is now undocumented, but I guess you have no desire to look at grinding videos, right? You do? So, more grinding? Okay, it's, it's okay, because uh, it's cold, and uh, when it's cold, it's not good for much other than the grinding, and it's uh, dry, so it's great for ventilating the boat. So let's grind that, since you, you wanted it, and uh, you know I'll do anything for you, right? Look at this, it's dirty, the mosque is full of filth and it's actually getting hard to breathe. Time to clean them and uh, get a new pair of filters, yeah. This is no longer only a technical uh, video, it's also a video log, a vlog about uh, how a guy refurbishing a boat is uh, getting along with it and uh, all the obstacles. I do hope it's okay. Yeah, you may very well ask, why am I grinding that much on board? There are several reasons for that. The polyurethane coat that I did. That paint is now illegal in the EU and therefore also in Norway. So I will not be able to completely coat the hull inside with that paint anymore. So I am removing what was there. Secondly, I'm not sure where I am going to attach the structural members. So. I might as well grind off now that the boat is a complete mess of dust and it's really bad and it is hard 
shitty work to be really honest I hate it but uh, I'm doing it now and I'm trying to complete so I can wash the boat with fresh water and, and uh, get the dust away um, thirdly I did make a mistake painting the hull that early you know I did buy the boat believing it was based on the description and what I was told slightly better than my standards uh, indicates so I thought I was just going to give it a uh, nice brush up and uh, you know buying a new boat you want to clean it up and you want to have it nice but that only made more work for me later so that was a mistake I shouldn't have done that but you know you do will you will do mistakes while working with refurbishing a boat I think it's well spent time doing this grinding now and have uh, all the opportunity to, to um, touch uh, polyester, polyester and uh, fiberglass where I, I wish to coat or to, to, uh, to attach or do anything treatment with the hull so later. This is what we had time for this time and uh, I will end the video here uh, in uh, the boat yard and uh, until next time I plead you to leave a like if you didn't like it, if you didn't like it that much, uh, of course you don't have to leave a like, I understand that very much. Uh, I will not be too sad about it, I hope, and um, also consider if you wish to see this uh, quiet grown-up man uh, continue working with this boat and uh, some of the life uh, connected to, to it, please consider subscribing. Until next time, have a nice week.